vectors, component form, magnitude, and direction. Now, this is a geometry video, so we're not going to get into vectors too heavily. That's what's going to happen in linear algebra and calculus. So this is just for our geometry lesson. We have 13 previous videos for Chapter 8, and you can go to them in the geometry playlist if you become lost or confused. A vector is a quantity that has both length and direction. And the speed and direction an object moves can be represented by a vector. So this guy jumping into the water from the diving board, he's going in this direction down and at a certain speed. So we can think of a vector as a line pushing in one direction. And this vector right here may be named vector AB, or we can call it vector V. This A is the initial point, it's sometimes called the tail, and B would be the terminal point, and that could be called the head or tip. When you see this AB with this half arrow over the top, this notation tells us the initial point is A, and the terminal point is B. See? It's going in that direction. A vector can also be named using component form. So these are angle brackets. And XY of a vector lists the horizontal and vertical change from the initial point to the terminal point. So if you take a look at this, we've got this vector CD right here. And we can see there's a 2 here and there's a 3 here, okay? So the component, component form of vector CD is 2, 3. The horizontal change is 2 and the vertical change is 3. In component form, the initial point is always at the origin on a coordinate plane, okay? And typical vector quantities are velocity, acceleration, force, and you do vectors in physics, too. So here's some examples. A northwest wind at 15 miles per hour. So we've got a speed and a direction. Or driving 15, 50 miles per hour east. We have a speed and a direction. And the direction of the vector is indicated by half of an arrowhead and represents the direction of the quantity. We can write vectors in component form. Here we've got vector EF, and the horizontal change from E to F is 4 units. The vertical change from E to F is negative 3 units, so the component form of vector EF is 4, negative 3. Vector PQ, it's got an initial point P of X sub 1 is 7, Y sub 1 is negative 5, and our terminal point Q, our X sub 2 is a 4, and our Y sub 2 would be a 3. We subtract the coordinates of the initial point from the coordinates of the terminal point. So we would do X sub 2 minus X sub 1, and then Y sub 2 minus Y sub 1. So that's going to give us a 4 minus a 7, and a 3 minus a negative 5, when we substitute those coordinates, those given points. Now we can simplify it. 4 minus 7 is a negative 3. 3 minus negative 5, we add the opposite, we get a positive 8. So vector PQ would be negative 3, 8. Now look at this one. This is vector U. It's going down in this direction towards the left. Our horizontal change is a negative 3. If this was the x-axis, it would be going into the negatives, wouldn't it? And it's coming down negative 4. So vector U is negative 3, negative 4. And the vector with initial point L, so our x sub 1 is negative 1, our y sub 1 is a 1, and a terminal point of M, so our x sub 2 is a 6, our y sub 2 is a 2, vector LM would be 6 minus negative 1 and 2 minus 1. We'd add the opposite and get a 7 and a 1, okay? And the magnitude of a vector is its length. So the magnitude of a vector is written like this. It looks like absolute value bars, doesn't it? So that would be the magnitude of vector AB. This would be the magnitude of vector V. Now, some books and teachers use double bars for magnitude because they don't want you to confuse it with absolute value. All right? So you might see it with double bars. When a vector is used to represent speed in a given direction, 
the magnitude of the vector equals the speed. So, for example, if a vector represents the course paddled by a canoeer, the magnitude of the vector is the canoeer's speed. It's how fast he's going in that direction. And magnitudes are always non-negative because we're talking about a speed, right? You can't go negative speed. Even if you're going backwards, you're still going a certain speed. We can find the magnitude of a vector. We draw the 4, negative 2 on a coordinate plane. So we know it starts at the origin, the origin, right? So that's the initial point. Then 4, negative 2 is the terminal point. Now we find the magnitude by using the distance formula. Actually, it's a variation of the distance formula because we'd have the vector here. So for our x sub 1, y sub 1, it's at the origin. So we've got 0, 0 as our tail. And for our tip, our terminal, we've got x sub 2, y sub 2 as a 4, negative 2. So the magnitude of vector 4, negative 2 would be the square of 4 minus 0 squared plus negative 2 minus 0 squared. That would give us the square of 4 squared plus 4, or 16 plus 4, which is the square root of 20, which is approximately 4.5. Now, looking ahead, when you get into linear, linear algebra and calculus or maybe some physics, you're going to learn about how the magnitude of a vector is a scalar. Okay. And the direction of a vector is the angle that it makes with a horizontal line. And this angle is measured counterclockwise, okay, from a positive x-axis. So if that's the x-axis, that green dotted line, it's going counterclockwise. So this vector AB here, angle A is 60 degrees. And the direction of a vector can also be given as a bearing that is relative to the compass directions, north, south, east, and west. Here we have vector AB. It has a bearing of north 30 degrees east. See? So it's going north, but it's also going 30 degrees east. Okay? And a zero vector has its initial and terminal points at the origin. It has zero magnitude and can go in any direction. And we can find the direction of a vector. A wind velocity is given by the vector 2, 5. We can find the direction of the vector to the nearest degree. First, we draw the vector on a coordinate plane. So it's got a terminal point of 2, 5, right? So we draw that here. We know it starts at the origin, right? That's our initial point. And now, next, we find the direction. And we draw a right triangle. So we have A, B, C. Angle A is the angle formed by the vector and the x-axis. And tangent of A is equal to the opposite over the adjacent, right? So that's going to be 5 over 2. And the measure of angle A is equal to the inverse tangent of 5 over 2. On our calculator, we get this nice long decimal number, which rounds to approximately 68 degrees. Now here's some vector notation. And I say some because there is more, but we're not going to get into it in this course. And the symbol, if we have an AB with this half arrowhead over the top, we read it as vector AB. When you see a lowercase with this half arrowhead over the top, it's just vector V. And that's usually in bold print in textbooks. If you see something like this, because we're going to talk about vector addition in the next video, this means vector U plus vector V. This is read as vector 2, 3. And this is read as the magnitude of vector AB, okay? So, remember, magnitudes are always non-negative. And our next lesson, we're going to learn about equal vectors, parallel vectors, vector addition, and resultant vector in 8.6b before we move on to Chapter 9 and get back into transformations, okay? So I didn't want to get too deep into this because this is not a physics course. It's not a linear algebra or calculus course, but we did need to cover this. And I hope I explained it well enough, and I hope you're doing well. I'll see you next time. Don't forget to hit the like button. Bye.